Hope you all have been having a good break so far. We are now starting um, a unit on biotechnology or how biotechnology can be useful for us. Um, the first thing in biotechnology we're going to be studying is transformation or the idea that bacteria can be transformed um, to do things that are helpful for us. Just to review, um, bacteria are prokaryotic organisms. What that means, because they're prokaryotic organisms, is that they are a simple cell, meaning they have no nucleus and no other organelles. So they simply have a cell membrane, if you remember all the things that a simple cell has, and they have their DNA loosely, loosely, I guess, around in their, um, in their cytoplasm, and they have ribosomes, and then inside the cell is also the cytoplasm. But they are simplistic cells. Um, because they're very simplistic, we, they can be transformed relatively easily. Um, this lesson is to talk about how bacteria gain genetic variation. And there are three main ways that bacteria gain genetic variation. So first of all, bacteria, cell, bacteria cells divide by a process known as binary fission. Um, you can't say it's mitosis because mitosis is all those complicated stages where like the chromosomes news in the, in, um, move into the middle and get pulled apart. But in binary fission, what simply happens is the chromosome, which is a circle, cir circle um, in bacteria, replicates and then the, sim the cell simply divides in half. So there's no need to move chromosomes because the, the, the bacteria have, sim have one chromosome. And all they have to do is simply re replicate that chromosome and then divide. Now, the process of bacteria reproducing produces no genetic variability. If they just replicated their DNA, they would be genetically the same. But bacteria are very different from each other. Um, and we're going to talk about the three ways that bacteria gain genetic variability. Their reproductive method just by itself, if it went perfectly, produces bacteria that are genetically the same. But the three ways um, which they can gain genetic variability are rapid reproduction and mutation, genetic recombination, and, uh, um, and we're also going to see transformation. So those are the three ways um, that bacteria uh, develop genetic variability. So first off, unlike us who take nine months to reproduce, um, bacteria can re reproduce in a matter, a matter of minutes. Um, as a result, because they're constantly replicating their DNA, their DNA polymerase makes more mutations in a given time period. Not because it's not as good as ours, but because they're replicating more, so there's a greater chance that a mutation will occur. Because of this, bacteria get genetic variability just by through random mutation. DNA polymerase makes mistakes, about one every one million base, pair, base pairs, and because bacteria are replicating their DNA, those mistakes accumulate faster. In fact, just a side note, whenever the AP exam talks about genetic variation, all organisms can get genetic variation through mutation. It's the source of gen that's the ultimate source of genetic variation. Any change that occurs is really ultimately due at some point to a mutation that occurred. Now, the other main way that bacteria can get genetic variation is through something called genetic recombination. Um, we're going to look at three processes. Um, that allow for genetic recombination to occur. In general, genetic recombination is when two organisms recombine their material. Um, we're going to look at three, three ways that it can happen. The first one is transduction, the second one is conjugation, and the third one is transformation. Transduction um, is the process by which viruses um, infect bacteria pick up their genes, and then introduce the genes of a bacteria into another bacterium. Um, so let's take a look at this process here. So here we have a virus that's infecting um, a bacteria cell. It injects its DNA, and then it's using the bacteria cell to, um, to build more viruses. By chance, when building the virus, a piece of bacteria DNA gets incorporated into the virus. Now, so I'll say that again, by chance, when the virus is being assembled, a piece of bacterial DNA gets incorporated into the virus. The virus then, then goes to infect another bacterium. And the gene from the bacterium that infected gets incorporated into the DNA of the, of the bacteria that the virus is infecting. So from this way, viruses 
can transport, can transport genes from one bacteria to genes of another. In the picture that's here, um, the first bacteria that got infected had this A plus gene. And the, by accident, the virus picked up the A plus gene. And when it infected another bacterium, it gave this bacteria, which had the A minus gene, didn't have the A plus gene. This virus now has the A plus gene because it got the DNA um, from the virus, which was previously um, in another bacterium. So in summary, transduction is when a virus picks up DNA or bacterial DNA from one bacterium and infects another cell and transports that piece of gene to another bacteria cell. It's basically genetic, genetic diversity caused by viruses. Now, the second way um, that genetic recombination can occur is something called conjugation. Okay. And con conjugation is when two bacteria directly exchange genetic material. If we see in this picture here, we have a bacterium here and we have a bacterium here. And in conjugation, bacteria connect with something known as a sex pillus. Um, and genetic material, usually plasmids, which we'll talk about in a second, travel um, through the sex pillus. Usually it gets replicated first, and then it travels through the sex pillus um, into the other bacterium. Um, people think that this evolved, or bacteria evolved through this, because in general, genetic diversity is a good thing for an organism. Um, it gives it the ability to... Um, adapt to changing conditions. So bacteria that can, bacterium or species of bacterium that could do this were at an advantage if they were able to introduce genetic variability into each other through this mechanism. So this is the experiment that gave rise to the idea that bacteria could exchange um, genetic material with each other. So there was a mutant strain of bacteria that had the inability to make the amino acid tryptophan but could make the amino acid arginine. And then there was another mutant strain that had the reverse condition. It could make tryptophan, but could not make arginine. Um, and then what they did is they took these two strains and mixed them together in a test tube. And then they put each one of these, as I try to draw, on a bacteria plate lacking any amino acids. So they put all of them on a plate. There's my nice plate lacking amino acids. And what they saw is that this one died, all death here, because these bacteria could not make tryptophan, and that's required to live. And these ones also died, because they couldn't make arginine, and that's required to live. But the ones in the mixture tended to live on the plate. And that's because somehow what happened in this, in this tube is con conjugation happened. They exchanged genes, and then there were some bacteria in this mixture that had both the arg plus gene and the R trip plus gene, and therefore since they could make both amino acids, they could survive on a medium lacking amino acids. And that's what we see on this slide here. No growth here, no growth here, but in the mixture because of conjugation and, and the bacteria cells got both genes that they needed to live through conjugation, they was able to have growth on the middle plate where both strains were mixed together. So the DNA that's exchanged in conjugation is often something known as a plasmid. And a plasmid is a circular form of DNA that some bacteria have besides their regular chromosome. And what happens, and then we don't care about what it's called, F plasmid, is that in conjugation, the plasmid gets replicated and then travels through the sex pillus into the other plasmid. And whatever genes are on this plasmid are now, after it's replicated and traveled through the sex pillus, now in the other bacterium. We are going to talk much, much more about plasmids, actually, in the next video. But for now, um, plasmids are circular pieces of DNA that bacteria have besides the bacterial chromosome, and they can be exchanged back and forth um, through a sex pillus. Now, this is not necessarily good for us humans. There's something called R plasmids. Um, and R plasmids tend to have, or always have, resistance to various antibiotics. So they may have a gene that gives the bacteria resistance to penicillin. Now it's not good, but bacteria have evolved the ability to obviously take these plasmids, replicate them, and then give them to other bacteria through a sex pillus. This is not good for us um, because bacteria have the ability to give other bacterium genes that give them resistance to antibiotics, and obviously we need antibiotics to kill bacteria. 
um, they have reserved some antibiotics um, for re severely resistant diseases that aren't treated with um, general antibiotics. They have them sort of reserved in the hospitals that are only used in, 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 um, um, in infections that have been resistant to the main antibiotics that we always use. Just as a side note, um, in case antibiotics, in case you don't know what they are, antibiotics are drugs um, used to kill only bacteria. Um, now, there are several ways certain antibiotics work. Um, the goal of the best antibiotic would be an antibiotic that kills only bacteria and none of your cells. But some cell, some of the antibiotics do cause some side effects, nausea, things like that, because they're hurting your cells. But sometimes the antibiotics, we look at some of the antibiotics that we have, they inhibit the bacteria's ability to make certain glucose into energy, or they inhibit the ability of the bacteria to construct a cell wall. The goal is with antibiotics is to kill the bacteria and not kill your cells. Um, the stronger antibiotics, which are only given in cases where normal penicillin, things like antibiotics don't, amoxicillin, um, you know, antibiotics like that don't work, have more side effects in humans, um, and therefore they're avoided, and they also want to keep them in reserve because we do not want bacteria um, getting access um, or being exposed to these antibiotics more and more um, for the fear that they will develop a resistance to them. The last way that bacteria can um, gain or pick up genetic variation is transformation. Um, and transformation is when bacteria pick up naked DNA from the environment. Um, in the next three days or so, so when we get back from break, I know we all still have a week until we have to go back. It's Tuesday. Um, so when we, when we go back, we're going to be transforming bacteria. We're going to get bacteria to pick up a piece of naked DNA from the environment. Um, and that piece of naked DNA is going to make the bacteria glow in the dark. Um, so like I said, we're going to be forcing bacteria to do this um, when we get back from break. Um, and this has many uses um, for us in general. The main use that you guys have probably heard of is diabetics need insulin. Um, and currently, most of the insulin that's produced by the uh, pharmaceutical industry is made by bacteria. What we do... Uh, what, he, what, what they do is they take the human gene for insulin and put it in a plasmid. And we'll talk more about plasmids and why, how they can be used in the next video. And then they force, through a process known as heat shock, which we're going to learn about, they force the bacteria to take in the plasmid with the human insulin gene in it. And then the bacterium, because it doesn't know any better, will produce the human insulin protein. And then they purify it through a pretty complicated process called protein chromatography. They purify the insulin and then give it to diabetics and, and needles. Um, but we can use, because bacteria don't know any better and will produce any gene that they give them, any gene that you give a bacteria, it will express. Um, next week, after the break, we're going to do this and we're going to discuss sort of how it's done. How do we get a gene into a bacterium using a plasmid? Um, is the is the lesson for next week. All right, answer the guided questions and you'll get the second video soon.